Hello and welcome to Gastrovision. I am Dr. Kaji Sohail from Government Medical College, Srinagar. In today's session, we are going to do a step-by-step -step video analysis of endoscopic ultrasound at the duodenal bulb station. This walkthrough will help you understand the exact scope movements, key landmarks and practical tips that make imaging more accurate and systematic. When we perform endoscopic ultrasound from the duodenal bulb, the very first landmark we aim to identify is the portal vein. The portal vein is the anchor. It is the most obvious and stable structure that guides all further orientation in this station. Sometimes identifying the portal vein directly can be difficult. In such cases, we first look for the intrahepatic branches inside the liver, which are usually easier to detect. By tracing these branches downstream, we eventually reach the extrahepatic portal vein, which then serves as our starting point. Once the portal vein is in view, the next movement is clockwise rotation of the scope. This maneuver allows us to follow the course of the portal vein until we reach the portal confluence, the point where the superior mesenteric vein and splenic vein join to form the main portal vein. This confluence is a critical landmark because it sits at the level of pancreatic neck. From here, we shift our attention to the main pancreatic duct. After locating it, we follow the duct from the confluence towards the pancreatic body. To do this, the scope is rotated counterclockwise. The key moment to remember is that the region where the pancreatic duct crosses the superior mesenteric vein and portal vein represents the anatomical neck of the pancreas, a very important area to assess carefully as small lesions or subtle changes can be missed if not scrutinized. Alongside the portal vein, we also visualize the bile duct, which runs on the transducer side of the vein. The bile duct appears as a tubular structure without Doppler flow, and following this is crucial to understand the biliary anatomy from this station. By slowly advancing the scope while turning it clockwise, we sweep across the head of the pancreas and enter the region of the major papilla. To bring the papilla clearly in view, the scope tip is bent slightly upward while continuing the clockwise rotation. In this rotation, the pancreatic head and the papillary region typically appears on the right side of the ultrasound image. At this point, a safety consideration is essential. The tip of the echo endoscope can sometimes press hard against the duodenal wall while we are performing these rotations. Forcing the scope in this situation risks perforation. The correct approach is to stop withdraw slightly and reposition instead of pushing forcefully. Next, we transition from advancing to withdrawing. While withdrawing the scope, we rotate counterclockwise and angle the tip slightly downward. This maneuver lets us follow the bile duct from the papilla upward towards the hepatic hilum. In doing so, we attempt to capture the bile duct in its long axis which is the best orientation to assess for stones, strictures, or the wall abnormalities. As we follow the bile duct, we may encounter the right hepatic artery, which typically appears between the portal vein and the bile duct. On ultrasound, it is seen as small round pulse-style sections. Recognizing it is important so that it is not mistaken for a duct. With continued counterclockwise rotation and downward angulation, we approach the hepatic hilum. Here, we can usually identify the junction of the bile duct and cystic duct. From this point, we can carefully trace the cystic duct all the way to the gallbladder and visualize the gallbladder from its neck to its fundus. However, gallbladder imaging can be variable. 
the confluence morphology and gallbladder position differ significantly between individuals. If following the cystic duct is not successful, an alternative maneuver is to turn the scope counterclockwise and direct the probe anteriorly. This often allows the gallbladder to come into view with the neck usually seen on the left of the screen and the fundus on the right. But again, this relationship is not absolute and depends on patient anatomy. Finally, remember that from the diurnal bulb, we are most often able to visualize the superior head of the pancreas. The inferior head may not be adequately imaged from this station. Forcing the scope forward in an attempt to see it can be dangerous and may cause perforation. And instead, if the inferior head of the pancreas needs to be evaluated, the scope should be repositioned in the descending duodenum. That's all in the video analysis of duodenal bulb station. Thank you.